Stephanie, welcome to the cave. Thank you so much for having me. Exciting time. The listeners or the viewers are going to see you soon on your new film, Soulmates, that you uh, you wrote, directed it also, I think, right? Is that what I... Not, I did not direct it. Okay. So you just, you I wrote it and then you started it. it. You wrote, and you wrote it with your uh, co-star also. I did. I co-wrote it and I co-starred in it with my actual real life best friend. That's that's great. Yeah, I can't wait to be uh, talking. It's going to be releasing November 12th which uh, we'll, we'll talk about the whole process and everything. But I was doing some research on you. I want to know a little bit more about you. Uh, you grew up in Vermont. How did you decide the whole entertainment industry? Um, I did. I grew up in Vermont. Um, I actually, when I was a kid, someone tried to scout me and my mom said no. And <laughs> <laughs> I think that I was just very defiant and I wanted to do it anyway. Okay. Um, but I also just was always a creative storyteller and I knew that I wanted to tell so stories in some capacity. Uh, not a whole lot in Vermont as far as industry opportunities. So yeah. I started in New York City and then I moved out to Los Angeles and yeah, just have always been a writer and a creator and wasn't really intending to be on screen as much, but sort of happened into that and fell in love with telling stories through that as well and you've done music also yes i am also a musician have some <laughs> albums floating around out there in the ethers <laughs> was that the goal at first music or was it just a little bit of everything no what was the initial goal i think my initial goal was to be an actress once i decided that i wanted to have some sort of film industry something mm. uh, and I was always writing and working on scripts that I wanted to be in okay. um, and then also just create um, but then music was sort of an on the side thing I always sang and then I felt like if I was gonna really sing I should learn an instrument I actually grew up playing the flute but you can't sing and play the flute at the same time so I learned the guitar and piano and I started writing my own songs. Um, I'm very type A. So being an actress was a little hard for me because you can't always create whenever you want. I mean, you can act, I guess, with a dot on the wall, but it's not really the same. So I started writing music and, I, and then just kind of accidentally pursuing a music career as well uh -huh. um, because I felt like I could control the creative process a little bit more. I could write whenever I wanted. I could sing and just express myself in a way that I could control a little bit more. So it, it was uh, good for my type A personality. <laughs> you mentioned that, you, you know, the goal was like also like being a, like an actress and everything like that. Who, who influenced you? Who did you enjoy watching growing up or like even just like as an actress, actor or like TV shows, movies? Well, that's a hard question because there's a lot of influence for sure. But definitely growing up, Julia Roberts was okay. my favorite. I love romantic comedies. I love Julia Roberts. My mom looks a little bit like Julia Roberts, I always thought. So <laughs> I always wanted to play Julia's daughter or something. That was always a huge goal of mine. Um, and I just love, she's just so charismatic on camera and mm. um, fun to watch and great such great movies and she's also a really great serious actress so she was kind of my first really big influence um but yeah i love all sorts of different films and different actors and i i do kind of always fall back on the romantic comedies though i think they're my favorite <laughs> well and that's why you got one coming out now exactly <laughs> so yeah let's talk about soulmates uh tell us about the film and like and how'd you come up with this idea for this um, so actually, so Alexandra Case, um, my real life best friend who wrote this with me, um, we were actually living together roommates at the time in Los Angeles. And we had this really funny codependent best friendship where, cause we were both single. And so people would call us and say, oh, what are you guys doing on Saturday night? You know, that kind of thing to invite yeah. us to dinner parties with a bunch of couples. And then it would be us, <laughs> the best <laughs> friends who we were just this, this team that did everything together. And so we were always joking about what would we do when one of us fell in love and left, mm -hmm. that the other one would just be completely devastated. And how would we go to dinner parties? And, you know, we just, we were kind of joking about that. And then we said that would make a great script. Um, and we based it in Vermont because we're both from Vermont and we really love our state. We're 
probably the most rah rah Vermont people you'll ever meet. <laughs> um, so yeah, we wanted to tell a story influenced by our growing up in Vermont and influenced by our best friendship and and then what it's like to have a best friend who then all of a sudden you have to figure out a new relationship when you mm -hmm. have a significant other who is also your best friend and that's really hard um so yeah and we we also we felt like there were a lot of movies out there where the females were against each other or fighting over a guy or that kind of thing and and we wanted to tell a story where it was about the friendship. Yeah, but from, from, the, from what I've seen so far, it kind of looks like you do get into a little argument in there too, in the movie. We do. It definitely ends up being dueling, but it's not fight over the guy. It's yeah. a fight over preserving the relationship. The friendship. The friendship. Yeah. How long did it take you to, uh, to write the script? Well, our script has seen many different variations. OK. Uh, we wrote a version of it, man, maybe five years ago. And then we sent it to some people for notes that we loved and respected. And they gave us some great notes that it, it was one of those moments where, you know, you think you have this amazing thing and then you realize, <laughs> oh man, this needs work. So we tackled it excitedly and did a lot of reworking. We actually originally were playing the opposite characters. Okay. Um, oh. So when the Argent team, Argent Productions that um, came to us and wanted to make this movie with us, which was incredibly exciting, they actually suggested that we switch parts. Really? Um, yes. And we realized that it, it had been funny. We, we, we kind of wanted to write each other and play each other in a way and then also just play characters that weren't us and and i think that's never a great idea as an actor you have to really find the piece of yourself that is the character mm. and and so they were right and it was ultimately really better that we switched characters um so yeah it's been many uh, years of ver different variations yeah um how uh so when you were writing the script and everything, how much of it is like things that happened to you growing up, like even in Vermont or living there or your friend or your, uh, your best friend? Hmm. Did you take any ideas from things you've seen? Yes, definitely. A lot of it was from our own personal experiences growing up and yeah. Alexandra grew up in a very small town. So okay. we based the script more on her upbringing. I grew up in Montpelier, which is also a small town, <laughs> but it's the capital of the state. And I think it's almost 8,000 people, which is wow. still very small, but that's actually yeah. pretty big for a Vermont town. So um, it's not a city by any means, but it's, it's bigger. So my upbringing was, wasn't quite that down, you know, tiny, tiny little street where everybody goes to the general store and your post office is in the general store. But that is authentically how Alexandra grew up. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, I've been to Vermont before, so yeah. yeah. Oh, you have? Oh yeah, well, I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, great. Where did you go in Vermont? Just all over or do you have- a uh, It was uh, part of Burlington. Okay. And then um, I went to, uh, my cousin's graduation, and I can't think of his college. He graduated. Oh, Norwich University. Oh, yeah. That was very close to where I grew up. Yeah. So, uh, so when you wrote the script and everything, did you, was your goal first like did, how many places did you pitch it to roughly? Nine million. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was a it was an interesting process because we at first really wanted to be in it, and that was important to us, and so that limited how we could start pitching it. And so we were about to take it out in kind of a bigger way um, through our reps and just through people we knew. And then Alexandra lived in her, in the same building with someone that worked for Argent Pictures. Oh, wow. And they were just chatting one day and she was asking his advice. Cause we, at that point, we thought we might self-finance and make it as an independent film, we did a Seed and Spark campaign to rally community support because we really wanted to shoot it in Vermont. And that was an obstacle we were running into and talking to people. You know, there's no tax breaks there. So 
a lot of people wouldn't have wanted to film it there. They would want to shoot it in Canada and make it look like Vermont. So that was also really important to us. So we were at that point where we're like, no, we're holding on to everything precious to us. We're not letting anything go. So then just in Alexander chatting with Dan, who worked, who, who lived in her building, and asking his advice about film financing, he said, why don't you guys come into the office and, you know, you can pick our brains and we'll just have a chat. So we went in and it was raining, our hair was frizzy. We just were like wearing flannel shirts. I don't know, just totally not even a meeting, you know? And then they, we really hit it off with them and they asked if they could read our scripts and wow. they loved it. And then they took us out to lunch and asked if we wanted them to make our movie. and. We thought they were kidding. <laughs> it was so great. So we were so excited. Um, and that's kind of how it happened. It was just one of those organic things. How much input did you have in the movie after they said they're going to make it and everything? Were you, like, were you involved part of the casting process, like the filming locations? Yeah, we they involved us a fair amount. They definitely asked our advice about a lot of the location things, especially because we're Vermonters. Um, we got to go on the location scouting, which was really fun. Um, we were peripherally involved in the casting. They asked our opinions a little bit, but for the most part, they did that. We weren't really in control of that. We would send them suggestions, but um, yeah, they they really took the bull by the horns and we trusted them to make it and we're excited to be go. along for the ride that's great well i did notice that mark is also from new england also from rhode island so i figured you guys had like a little friendship thing going on where you decided to get him on board too i i do think that was a piece of it i think yeah. that he really he had that new england thing that was necessary for the casting we we did not know mark before he was cast okay. um, we we're very excited to have him on the film and he was just a joy to work with how long were you in Vermont to film the movie? We were in Vermont for about three and a half weeks for filming. So that's not too bad then, actually. It was very fast. It was very intense. Yeah. Is it, it like one of those fun. eight to 10 hours on set also? Oh, yeah. Um, there are definitely some some crazy 15-hour days and then um, not much recovery time in between. But it was so fun. And I actually really love making movies like that. I've done a couple films where we're on location and it's really fast and everyone's living in the same place. And it really creates a family, which is so fun. And I think that trickles through to the film as well. So it, even though it was intense and fast, it was a really amazing experience. Without spoiling the movie, what can you tell us a little bit about your character, Jess, and like, how did you prepare to play this role? Um, let's see. She's also very type A, so that wasn't hard to prepare because <laughs> that is me. Um, and she's also musical, so that was fun. I got to put a lot of myself into this. Um, I had to practice guitar again because I hadn't been playing for a little while. <laughs> so when I realized that I had to play for my own character, I realized I needed to start practicing <laughs> and get my butt in gear. Um, and then just to there was actually a lot of needing to kind of not think about it, if that makes sense, because mm. Alexandra and I were doing the scenes together. So it, it made it easy to just be ourselves and be best friends and let allow our natural cork to come out. Um, and the more we thought about it and tried to do things with the characters, it would just start to feel unnatural. So a lot of it was just us being best friends. You mentioned the whole best friend thing. How easy was it to like interact, like work with each other, like in the, in the scenes? Was it just, did it feel normal? Yeah. I mean, as normal as it can be when you have a bunch yeah. of people watching you and cameras and lights, yeah. you know, but yeah, I think it made it easier to do it together. Mm. Um, and some somehow we made it through the entire process of writing this film and shooting this film and we're still best friends. <laughs> <laughs> But that does a lot. <laughs> I, I read that it was filmed back in 2018, though, right? It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, the Argent team, Argent Pictures and Mandalay Pictures, um, who produced this, they were just starting to take it out to look for a distributor, and then right. the world ended. <laughs> <laughs> so everything so, had to be put on hold. 
Yeah, it had to be put on hold because of COVID and everything going on. So it was, it took about a year for them to get the edit they wanted. We had to do some reshoots uh, in there, which were at the beginning of 2019. So it was kind of a long post-production process. And then, yeah, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> how, can uh, the, uh, how can the listeners and the viewers uh, watch the film? So this film is going to be on demand pretty much anywhere you can rent anything. So, you know, Amazon, iTunes, all of that. And then it'll be on any Comcast on demand, any of that stuff. Um, and then it'll be in limited theaters. So for that, I would say just Google Soulmates Theatrical because they're sprinkled all over throughout the country, little theaters. Uh, it will be at the Lemley in Santa Monica if you are in Los Angeles area. And it's gonna be in, at the Savoy Theater in Montpelier, Vermont, if you're a Vermonter. And it'll be playing in a Woodstock theater a little, I think a week after. They haven't nailed the dates down yet, but November 12th, it will be available for rental. I mean, most of us are online now, right? So That's right. Uh, lastly, Stephanie, how can the listeners and viewers find you on social media for any information? I am Stephanie Lynn official on Instagram and that's probably the best way to find me. I'm not really a big Facebook person these days. I try to not do a lot of social media, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> and then I have a website, but I haven't updated it since like 2016. <laughs> so don't, there, look, don't look for that. Is there an Instagram for the movie? Um, there, there is, it's the soulmates it's the Soulmates movie. Perfect. At the Soulmates movie. Yeah. Stephanie, this was great. I thank you uh, for coming on the show and good luck with the film. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah.